Throughout the 1790s, the relationship between the Baltic states and Great Britain had been stable. However, this was to change when Russia and Denmark joined together and formed the Northern Convention in December 1800. This was an armed neutrality orchestrated by the Russian Tsar's desire to forge closer links with Napoleon. Where Russia led, the other Baltic states had little choice but to follow. The situation was potentially very damaging to Great Britain, who were reliant on the Baltic countries for supplies in order to maintain the navy, and so the decision was made to send an armed force into the Baltic. In March 1801, under the command of Admiral Sir Hyde Parker, Nelson set sail from Great Yarmouth. The government was still hopeful that direct action could be avoided and that a diplomatic solution would be found. The decision to combine Nelson with Hyde Parker was to, in theory, place the warrior with what was seen as a more diplomatic commander in order to find a solution without the need to use force. This combination may have looked good on paper, but in reality the two admirals were not ideal bedfellows. Nelson was constantly frustrated by Hyde Parker's caution and what he perceived as inaction although over time their relationship mellowed and they formed a workable partnership. The fleet arrived off the Danish capital Copenhagen at the end of March and, despite attempts at a peaceful resolution, the decision was finally made to send Nelson in while Hyde Parker, in overall command, stood by. The battle that followed was politically uncomfortable for the British government. They were in effect attacking a neutral state, albeit one that was being coerced by its Russian neighbour into aggressive action. The timing of the expedition was crucial. Any later in the year, the Baltic ice would have melted, freeing the Russian fleet to join with the Danish to create an impressive combined force. The Danes, anticipating an attack, had placed heavily fortified batteries on board floating hulks in a line in front of the city. These were designed to keep any attacking ships well away from the city itself. The task that awaited Nelson was further complicated by the shoals that infested the approach to Copenhagen, and by the two forts that were within the approach. On the 2nd of April 1801, the battle began, and Nelson with his ships moved down the line of Danish batteries in order to attack and destroy them. What was initially expected to take only little time proved far harder than Nelson had envisaged. The Danes had fortified their city well, and Nelson later described it as the hardest action he'd ever fought. As the events dragged on and more and more British ships became either heavily damaged or aground, Admiral Sir Hyde Parker sent the signal to retreat. This signal is another moment in Nelson history that is heavily discussed and disputed by some historians. Was it a direct order that Nelson ignored? Or was Hyde Parker, sighted away from the immediate action, giving his subordinate a get-out if he felt the action was lost? Legend has it that Nelson, when the signal was reported to him, held his telescope to his blind eye and commented, I really do not see the signal. What is undisputed is that Nelson fought on despite the order. Having noticed a weakening within the Danish line, Nelson sent a letter under a flag of truce to the Danish Crown Prince. The letter was addressed to the brothers of Englishmen, the Danes. Within the letter, Nelson said that he had directions to spare Denmark when no longer resisting. But if firing continued, Nelson would be obliged to set on fire all the floating batteries he has taken, without having the power of saving the brave Danes who defended them. The fighting ceased, and Nelson went ashore. Following discussions with the Crown Prince, a truce was agreed and the battle was over. There is some dispute as to whether this letter was a genuine act for the sake of humanity, as Nelson maintained, or a clever ploy to gain time for the British fleet to regroup. The Danes had become involved in a situation they didn't want, and Great Britain had been reluctantly forced to respond. It would later prove to be a battle that could have been avoided altogether if only 18th century communication had been swifter. The Russian Tsar had been assassinated earlier, and the likelihood is that the armed neutrality would have collapsed of its own accord. Nelson took over command in the Baltic and eventually returned to England on June the 30th, 1801.